We've made a whole sequence of modifications and additions step by step, making some mistakes along the way. And in this video, I'll give you an overview of what we've got. We've now got two tabs in our sketch, and this S.H tab, this header file tab, has some extra stuff in it just to declutter our, our code. So this is just getting some stuff out of the way and we're including it here so that it's just as if it was here at the top of the code. We're doing the usual things in our setup and then down here in the loop we're keeping time in microseconds so every time we start the loop we record the time now as equal to the value returned by the micros function and that's going to be a value it's an unsigned long because that's what micros returns and it can go for anywhere from zero up to about four billion and then it'll wrap around the zero again so it'll just keep on counting and the math will always work out just fine that covers about 71 minutes before it wraps around so for just about everything we do that's enough in our our labs in this course we're also going to keep track of a floating point value for the time now in seconds just so we can print it out so that it's a little more intelligible over here to know that it's been 552 seconds. Uh, and we'll keep track of how long it's been since we last went through the loop by having this delta t value here, time now minus time last. That means we're going to need to keep track of the last time we went through the loop. That happens right down here at the bottom of the loop. So just before we finish the loop, We'll keep track of this was what time it was la this time we started. That'll be the time last next time we come into the loop. And that time last value, it's declared over here in that s.h file. So it's out of our way, but it's still there as an unsigned long that can go all the way up to 4 billion microseconds. We've separated out where we get our input and calculate values from where we're going to do our printing. And that makes our lives a little easier in terms of tidiness. Uh, we're reading a digital value from pin 10, an analog value from pin A0. And we're reading the LED value from pin 13, which is the one attached to the LED. Now, any one of these types of variables will work for this kind of application. Uh, for the digital values anyway, you can even use a byte level because it can go up to 255. But for the analog read, it needs to go up to 1023. So you need to use either an unsigned or an integer value that's large enough to hold the quantities that we expect to get. We're setting a time constant for our smoothing and our time constant is in microseconds and the larger that is, the smoother the results will be. And the difference in time since last loop will usually be less than tau. So we're going to have to cast the calculation of our time constant or of our uh, waiting function into a float to make it turn out to be something other than zero. Now, in the odd case where our time constant might actually be longer, or sorry, our time between loops might be longer than our time constant, we don't want this waiting function to go any larger than one. So it'll be a small number until it gets up to one, and then no matter how long it's been, it won't get larger than one. And when w is equal to one, it's just going to set the smooth value equal to the value that we just read. If w is smaller than one, which it will be most of the time, then it's going to take a little bit from the value we just read and more weight on the smooth value from multiple values before. And this smooth value is a static floating point number, floating point so it can be decimal, and static so it will remember it from one uh, time through the loop to the next. After we've got all of our input and calculated values of what we think is going on, then we're going to take some action. And in this case, the only action we're taking is we're blinking the light on and off. If the light was on, turn it off. Otherwise, turn it on. Now we're going to print out some stuff so that we can see what's going on and monitor what's happening on our serial output monitor. And we don't want to print out every time, so we're going to keep track of last time we printed. Again, a static value. 
It's an unsigned long, so it's big enough to hold a microsecond value. We're going to call it last print, and it will start off equal to zero. If the time now that we got up here before minus last print is large enough, then we'd like to print out. And we're going to turn these values in microseconds into a value in seconds by dividing by a million decimal. So we do a floating point calculation. We're going to compare it to 0 0.1 to get it to print out about every tenth of a second. We need to make sure we remember to set last print equal to time now so that we don't just print it out every time. We need to have that value of last print be accurate. And then finally we're going to print out some stuff here. Now instead of having serial print statements here, we've defined these macros here in the, uh, in the .h file that'll substitute in serial print or serial print a comma and a space and then serial print or serial print line to allow us to have a little bit of a shorthand here for printing things out. And that makes life just a little easier and tidier. We could just as easily put all of those serial print statements in here. It would just be a little more tedious to type and we might have a little harder time picking out what we were printing out. And finally, at the bottom of the loop, we're specifying that the time last is now set equal to time now, so that next time we come into the loop, time last will be the correct value. So that's what's going on in this function, in, in this sketch. And when we run it, we get the kinds of outputs that we expect. We get a time in seconds. It's increasing by about a tenth of a second each time even though it's only taking 240 microseconds to go through the loop. It's getting analog read values that are moving back and forth between 505 and 506, and it's smoothing those values to be equal to about 505 and a half somewhere. So it's smoothing them off to get a more accurate estimate of what's going on. This is the sketch that you'll use as a basis for a lot of the uh, data acquisition that you'll do in MEC 217 and in other courses where you'll uh, use Arduinos. It allows you to do a whole lot of basic data acquisition and management of your output. If you're looking for more detail on any of the things I've just described, check out the individual videos that describe each of the step-by-step -step modifications we made to this sketch and they'll help you understand uh, a little better what's going on.